Okay, let's talk about the renters reform bill, okay. right? So it's a bill, I think it's still going through parliament right now. The idea is that this will solve years and years of gridlock in the rental market and the private rental markets protect uh, tenants. I mean, how is it doing? You know, what, what do you think about the law? Well, it's interesting. There's definitely a lot of pushback from landlords. Mm. Um, I think it will be worth just going through like the main points. Yeah, like, what, what, it what does it try to achieve? Well, the aim is essentially to prioritize renters. So there's a lot of um, instances where renters are taken advantage of. Mm. So either their rents are raised really high or they're kicked out unnecessarily. Um, or unethically, um, their, their standards of li living are not um, maintained. So it's basically trying to help the renters, like mm. it's for the people, right? For the people. Yeah. But there's certain issues because it seems very, um, it seems to have kind of demonized landlords a lot, specifically like smaller, you know, house scale landlords. We're not talking about the, the corporations and yeah. stuff. Or people who have a you know, hundred properties. You know, yeah. Like, you know. um, and to be honest, I mean, to be fair, I've, I've never uh, rented. So I don't know, like, I've never rented from like one of these corporations. Um, I designed the homes. I think they're quite nice, personally. Because <laughs> you also uh, work as an architect. Yeah. So um, it's, it's an interesting conversation, but maybe we go through some of the, yeah, the main points. So... The first thing is abolishment of fixed term tenancies. So you'll know like now you find the house, you sign like a one year lease. Sometimes you can get a better deal if you you know sign for two years, if you know you're gonna be there for a long time. So that is now gone. So all standard tenancies will be rolling contracts. Um, I'm not sure if there's like a minimum term, like maybe you have to be there with a month or three months, but after a certain point, it will become rolling tenancy and the landlord doesn't really have a right to kick you out unless there are specific circumstances. And are, the, are those circumstances put in the contract before you sign them or is it sort no, of- No, I think, I think it's, it's legislation. So um, I'm not sure how it works with like selling homes, but I would assume if the landlord is in a situation where they have to sell their home, then they probably have the right to, to let you go. Um, but it's more for things like, so before, if a landlord wanted to raise the rent, they didn't really have a right to do that just in the middle of your contract, but they could serve you with a section 21 notice for any reason, if I'm not um, wrong. And essentially they can kick you out and then start a new contract with someone else at the higher rent. So yeah, who's gonna pay higher? Yeah, who will pay higher. Um, but it also works for getting problematic tenants out as well. So if you've got a tenant that just like trashes the place, um, which I don't really like to put forward a lot because it, it gives a bad rep to tenants. I don't think most of us are like trashing our homes at the end of the day we live there. But in those instances, that's something, the Section 21, that a landlord can use to, to get people out of the home. Mm. Um, but you can't do that anymore. So what are, what are the sort of, let's say three other major things. So one is rolling term contracts become sort of the default yeah, one is um, rolling term contracts, um, no fault evictions, ending of that. Um, there's also uh, implementation of ARAB's law, which is um, in response to a little boy who died because of the mold that was in his rented accommodation. He was only two years old. Um, and there's also a, so landlords will be required to bring standards up to par. Um, I don't know what the measurements of those are. But I do know there is also an energy certificate rating as well, where, you know, where you have your, um, you'll have like energy rating A, B, C, D, E. Gotcha. So I think the average in the UK is about a D and landlords will be required to have a C rating. Um, so you have to get it assessed. You have to bring, if it's below that, you have to bring it up to make the place uh, rentable. But what I don't get is, because so, this started a big debate at the office, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. is this good? Is it bad? Because all of these, I'm sure tenants listening are like, this is great. Like, yeah. this, what, where's the negative part? So the issue comes in. So this is great for tackling problematic landlords who don't take care of their homes, who want to charge you an arm and a leg for your right to housing. But where the issue comes in is tenant, um, landlords also have to actually make money. At the end of the day, it's a business, um, especially with like smaller landlords that maybe have, I don't know, like three, four, five homes maybe. Um, this is their income they are working people just like the rest of us. And I feel like a lot of the time when we think of landlords, we think of 
or um, this mega millionaire who has 501 properties and is overcharging me. They're not all like that. And the issue comes in is if landlords can't make a profit, they will withdraw from the rental market. And that could actually cause rents to increase because there's even more demand. Because as we all know, it's so hard to rent somewhere. Like you're, oh, that's another thing actually. So they're actually banning bidding wars. Um, so I don't know how that works, but I know that um, you can't solicit or accept offers higher than the listed price. So I guess you, I don't know how you just pick someone. Um, yeah, so, so if it says, okay, this property is 1,400 pound a month, you then say, okay, I, I like that. But then someone else is like, I really want that as well. And they say, yeah. okay, I'll do 1,600. Yeah. You can't basically do that. You can't. You have to just accept the, what you've listed it yep. for. Exactly. Now, you know, Cleo, this is where, this is where kind of like our discussion started <laughs> in the office, right? Because you were, you were saying in, a, in, another, in, in another part of the world, you've lived in before, something like that happened. You think something like that should happen. So what are your thoughts more generally on that? Yeah, like I, I completely get the argument about it being a business. And I think that is something that, like I'm, we're in a system, I appreciate the system exists and like I, I have to accept that there are certain standards and just expectations that have now been set because of the society that we've built that allows for, for people to make money off of housing. If we're really gonna get down to like what I believe in, I would argue that maybe that shouldn't have even been allowed to be something that we allow people to make money from because, mm. you know, arguably it's a right. So like the minute you bring money into it, people lose that right because it suddenly becomes about how much money you have and not how much of a human you are. And amazingly, we're all 100% human. <laughs> um, and so, but I think, yeah, really what it comes down to is the fact that exactly like this reform bill is about giving a little bit more power back to tenants. And as someone who has rented for over 10 years in UK and other countries in Europe and also further afield, like you are very aware often of just kind of how little power you have. And actually that the person you're paying money to seems to kind of be able to call the shots about whether you stay, whether you go, whether you're like, and it feels kind of very unfair because it's like, well, I'm giving you all of this money and I've signed this contract, but actually when it comes down to it, it felt like they have all the power and I don't have anything to show for it. Like typically, yes, you give your money up somewhere to live, but it's kind of like if you buy a handbag and it breaks the next day, often you can take it back and there's a level of kind of like, oh yes, we're sorry, like we'll replace it or we'll improve it or whatever. And there's lots of people I've met who like are living somewhere and they have mold and like they've got sick and it's got to the point where they've had to leave the property and find mm. somewhere else more expensive, more whatever. And that assumes that you have the money to do so. Um, so I'm evidently for the bill. I understand the arguments against about how landlords could lose out, but I think in the greater, the grander scheme is that we are putting normal working people first mm. and just trying to give a little bit more power back to them. Um, I still think really when it comes down to it, landlords still still have quite a lot of power in how they control their property. And I'm gonna be really honest, I don't know the ins and outs, but I'm still sure that there are gonna be some protections. And like, I just think it's important that we also remember that this isn't a product, it's like housing. And for me, there's a slight difference there. It's, it's no longer just um, a product or a service. It's mm. a kind of a human right for me. Yeah, I, you know what, that's, that's something I struggle with because I do see like housing as like housing and shelter as a human right. And it's it's weird the whole like, it feels commercialized or like capitalized on in a certain way. But equally, if these are like homes that people own, like it's not just like a product there where I've made something for you and I sell it to you. And if you don't get what you paid for, then, you know, I it's, it's not an exchange in that way. You're renting what someone owns. So surely, they should be able to set the terms of what of what they own. Um, does it mean they should get away with, you know, having like lots of mold and stuff? No, definitely not. But that that's just like a standards thing. I don't think that's, I don't think telling someone that you can't kick someone out or like you can't end a contract is the resolution to that. It's more, there is something actually about um, landlords having to register 
or be registered um, as part of this bill, which I would support because... Like a sort of landlord's register, you can see what landlords respond to issues, yeah. fix issues, so on so forth. Well, I'm not sure if it has that level of detail, but mm. I know as for you to be able to rent as a landlord, you'd have to be on this register. Um, and I would assume that comes with some certain standards which makes sense, you know, if you're, if you don't have a serviceable, livable accommodation, you shouldn't be allowed to, you know, put that out or exploit people um, who can't afford better. But at the same time, if you do have somewhere that is nice, you should be able to charge what you want for it, no? And it's, it's like the, the law of like supply and demand. If it's too expensive, no one's gonna pay for it. And that's the other issue as well. The main issue here is that landlords are being attacked for, not attacked, that's strong, but landlords are bearing the, the brunt of what is a housing crisis. I don't think it's landlords' fault mm. that there's a housing crisis. I think the government is not building enough houses and the uh, people- Enough social housing. Though. Yeah, enough social housing. And the people that have the housing are now, you know, they're like, oh, well, you own all the houses. Uh, I'm not sure if I agree. <laughs> I mean- one Especially thing, if you worked for it. I mean, if we look at the politics of this, I mean, Keir Starmer has, I mean, definitely has enough MPs to push this through. Um, it's interesting to see what will happen to the rental markets. I mean, we've had rent freezes in the past, most notably during COVID, I, I remember that coming in. Um, we've seen rent freezes, I think, tried in Berlin, uh, we were speaking about before. It was ruled unconstitutional within a year. I mean, it, it will be really interesting to see just how landlords react to this, you know, and, and of course, you know, the, the, Labour has to find some sort of political way to protect rent, uh, uh, rent uh, people's sort of rented accommodation, but also folks who own it. I do wonder though, a part of me was wonders, especially when I look at Angela Rayner, sorry, not Angela Rayner, um, Rachel Reeves. And I'm like, the, the whole housing system thing, you can tinker with rules here, you need to build more homes. Yeah. Like there needs to be a sort of, like a wartime level of like, you know, so, no, sorry, post-war where rebuilding, that sort of level of housing. And I just don't see that ambition in her where we're hearing that in the, in the budget coming up, that's gonna be probably raising up taxes, we're gonna be squeezed even more, even though they promised not to raise taxes. Like, but, just... but that's the thing, right? So question, if let's say they raise the taxes and yeah. they said this tax hack is going towards building homes. I think people would be for that. But the issue is they won't say that. They'll say, they'll say it's because there's a black hole in the budget, sorry, in the finances left by the Conservative Party. That They'll say something like that. If, if, if it was announced, if a, if a massive, sort of similar to what Kamala Harris is in America, if, if a massive housing sort of go was announced, not just people saying in principle, we need more housing. If, he gives a, if she gives a target, she gives a date, she gives a deadline, she gives a number, I think it would really excite people who know that the issue here is the council waiting list is ridiculous. Council housing is, is, is just doesn't work. Um, and and they're, they're to, even the massive public sort of building projects is private property, uh, private um, uh, landlords that, that, yeah. that fund and invest. This, this is also gonna, this is part of what the issue is as well, mm. because if people, in terms of like people's response to it, some landlords will pull out. It's like definitely because they just won't be able to make a profit. Um, probably more like older landlords mm. who are like, well, I'm ready to retire anyway. Let me just get rid of the property. Correct. Like you know, younger landlords might still have like more of an appetite and try and find innovative ways, I guess, to to make it profitable. But the the problem comes with social housing is that this is kind of the issue with, like you said, the UK system. Publicly funded projects don't have money. Like we don't pay enough taxes to to meet all these demands that society wants. So like, we want this, we want this, but we don't want to pay for it. And um, like, even when there is new development, um, I work a lot on like social housing and regeneration. It's the same public that pushes back and says, no, we don't want these towers. No, but backyard. where do you think the houses are gonna go? Like yeah. people need to live somewhere. And the, it's the, as we said, the, the social living standards. So there's, there's something called like housing standards. Um, there's lots of different uh, regulations and standards. Um, the social requirements are much more onerous and more expensive to meet. And they make nothing mm. in terms of like, profiting the the project so you've got a private developer who needs to make um let's say 50 percent um of accommodation in this tower has to be private it needs to be priced at double the price it's going to be half the size because their their standard is like we just pay per square footage we don't need to meet this regulation this regulation mm -hmm. um and if they're not able to make money or 
a tenancy and letting be profitable, they're just going to say, this isn't viable, we're going to pull out. And they're funding the entire project. Mm. So now, not only do you have landlords and less housing, but new housing is not coming because no one's going to pay for it. So it's, I, I don't know... I don't know how we get out of the yeah. the cycle. But, but this renters bill feels like a short term interim quick fix to appease renters, but you don't think it actually does anything to deal with the more chronic housing shortage and problem we yeah, have. Yeah, it, it helps in terms of like living standards and I definitely support some of the things that are on it. But I think it renters are gonna have to pay for that as well. Mm. Last word of this. I think it I think as you as we're kind of getting to and it's gonna get we don't have enough time today yeah. to talk about it, but I think it's exactly that. Like the the problem is a far bigger. And I think this is, I hope, I, my hope is, is that this is like their stopgap solution. It's like, let's, this is, is gonna affect people right now. This Correct, will probably yeah. affect me as a renter, but then it, we really need to see houses being built. The problem is, is that like houses don't get built in six months Overnight, yeah. and you know, Correct. and so like that is also an issue It's like, as you said, the money's not in there. Private needs to come in with public. Like these things are going to take time. But I, I hope that if this bill goes through, that it will make people's lives better. Yeah, there is one thing as well, actually. Sorry, <laughs> Just to end on a, a slightly lighter note, that was good. you get pet ownership rights now. Yeah, I saw that. I know. I don't Wait, know so you're allowed an animal in your? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. unless the landlord has a good reason, Unpopular. they can't refuse you from having see I have an unpopular opinion I don't like pets so that's, yeah, that one I'm just like that doesn't need to be in the bill whatever <laughs> see so I'm not I'm not just uh, with everything yeah. that's the one thing take it out it can be gone <laughs> I don't know how I feel about pets you know I'll be so real I don't I'm not a... I'm not an animal person they I...